Thank you so much for coming on today, Payman. Do you want to give a um, brief introduction of yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Payman. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Fairblog. And uh, mostly my expertise in on like, applied cryptography, things like partial encryption, SGX, like MPC. And I'm really passionate about like building this kind of applications, like applying this kind of toolings to real world applications, specifically in blockchains and solve um, like important problems. And I started like my graduate studies in Uwaterloo in the cryptography lab. I work on like MEV prevention and apply virtual encryption, identity-based encryption. And yeah, things got more serious after that. Amazing. And um, you're joining us from Fairblock's account today. Could you give us a brief introduction about Fairblock? What does Fairblock do? Yeah, sure. So Fairblock is a system for like delivering programmable privacy and conditional decryption to decentralized applications in a like, chain agnostic way. Chains that like leverage Fairblock are able to protect users from like malicious actors and application developers using Fairblock will get access to a like, variety of like cryptography tools. It's some kind of framework for developers to enable them to build like better and more like applications. Okay. And could you tell us how Fairblock's approach to delivering programmable privacy is different from other privacy solutions currently available in blockchain? Yeah, sure. There are like multiple differences. Like first of all, the schemes that we are using uh, are not like ZK. We are like more uh, close to like identity-based encryption, threshold decryption, uh, like FHE. And the things that we are doing are like mostly on the side of protecting content separate transaction on chain. So we provide on chain privacy, specifically like pre-execution privacy. So we like like HTTPS, we want to protect what's inside your transactions when you're interacting with the apps. This is like the main difference. The other difference is that we have some kind of concept and vision of modular privacy. So we don't want to be like another standalone, happy, isolated privacy chain. We want to provide this kind of services to users where they are in like current applications and current ecosystems that we have with actual users and actual threats. This is like the, our vision is like providing a tool set of like FHE, like encryption, IB to users in their wallets in the front ends of the current applications. So uh, like HTTPS users know it's important, they use it and but like they don't need to go through a lot of like uh, technical learning curves and affiliate themselves with other toolings, which sometimes it's a little shady. Okay. And in the context of DeFi and MEV, minor extractable value yeah. strategies, how does Fairblock protect yeah. users from vicious actors? Oh, as you exactly. mentioned? So like in DeFi, like for like multiple reasons, one of them is MEV prevention, the other bad MEV prevention, not like arbitrage. The other one is like limit orders, private intents in general. The problem mostly is that in the, like at the moment, everything is stored on chain is like totally visible to anyone, like with an internet connection, right? So while there are some like good things about like transparency, specifically, we don't want to prevent transparency. We want to make users like not suffer from like leaking all of the alphas or like all of the sensitive information in their contents while they're like storing them on chain. So the way that Fairblock works is that you can encrypt your transactions with some conditions. It can be a time, for example, end of block, or it can be a price for limit orders. And you encrypt them and you put them on chain. So it's transparent, it's like stored on chain in a decentralized way, but still you don't leak any sensitive information inside your transaction, right? And once the transactions, like conditions for decryption is met, for example, the price is reached or the, the time for that decryption is reached, we generate a like, decryption key in a decentralized way and send it to the like application side for decryption and execution. So to make it a little like easier to understand, first like we integrate with the application like L1s like in Cosmos or like L2s like Arbitrum. And once we've in integrated with them, we basically enable those protocols or like application developers on top of them to receive encrypted transactions. So this is like from the backend side. From the frontend side, we have some kind of JS libraries for enabling wallets or frontends to send encrypted transactions. And once these like two integrations are done, users will be able to like encrypt, encrypt transactions through the same experience that they used to have. 
and uh, with just a like simple toggle button for encrypting them or like even it can be enabled by default. So once the transactions are like in- encrypted, we just send them to directly to app chain in Cosmos or like, I don't know, L2s, like Arbitrum. And once transactions and good transactions are like included and like finalized in the block, we have a chain solely for the purpose of like uh, key management. So we run distributed key generation in our chain and we verify the conditions for decryption. And once the conditions are met, all of our validators send their private key shares and during our consensus, we build a, we aggregate those private key shares and generate a single key that can decrypt all of those transactions. And uh, we send the private key, we, we, we relate to other Cosmos chains or like Arbitrum, and then we can decrypt it and like execute the previously encrypted transactions. So in this way, transaction contents are protected during the execution and like before execution of the transactions. And uh, yeah, like other like MEV bots or like other competitors for like your limit orders or like people who want to try to steal your strategy cannot do anything. They, they can probably see the contents of a transaction once, it, once it's too late. Okay, thank you. That was very comprehensive. I hope I don't have to make you repeat yourself yeah. later on, but I think I might have to. Yeah. So you describe Fairblock as a chain agnostic and it can integrate with various blockchains, right? Yeah. So what are some challenges? Have you encountered any challenges in ensuring compatibility across different ecosystems yeah. because of this integration with other blockchains? How do you manage yeah, yeah. that? Exactly. So like, I think our main value is like making it in a way that actual users and like developers and other ecosystems can use that. The easiest part for us was like making it happen on our own chain. But the most challenging part is figuring, like designing a system that can actually work. We can provide this kind of service to like other ecosystems. This was the most challenging part in the like design research and like technical part. In Cosmos, we do it with Begin Block, ABCI++, and in Arbitrum, we use really interesting technologies like EVM Plus and Stylus. But basically, the like the logic of receiving, relaying it, and like receiving the decryption key and uh, decrypting them and like executing them in a way that other people cannot front run them or like uh, without any like significant delay was the, I think like most intellectual problem that we had in the like research and design part. Okay. And you also mentioned giving developers more freedom to build diverse applications. Could you elaborate? Sorry again, yeah. if you have to repeat yourself, but what kind of tool Fairblock provides to enable basically the broader freedom to developers? Yeah, yeah, sure. No, it's not like repetitious. So this is the interesting part. So so the interesting thing is that like when we talk in, about privacy in crypto, like all the time people just think about, I don't know, tornado cash, uh, just fighting with like governments and like ZK rollups. And the interesting thing is that like for ZK rollups, right now we don't even like have privacy. It's mostly about marketing, to be honest, right now. And it's like about like proving the execution trace. And uh, it's not just about like ZK cryptography, right? So, and also it's not just about like fighting like governments. What we mean by like privacy is basically protecting users for the like simple fact that a lot of applications need privacy. So let, let's make a like really simple example. In our real life, when we are going to, I don't know, open, we're opening our bank accounts, basically other people, even your family cannot see like what's in your bank, right? This is privacy, right? Like we don't say that like we have privacy in like Bank of America, right? Or like when we are playing like a simple game, I don't know, like a board game or like poker, when we don't show what we have in our hands, other people cannot see your hand in your tent. We don't call it like privacy. It's not something shady. It's basically some part of the logic of the application or the game that you are playing, right? Or like in voting, like when we are in political elections or any like normal election, or like in auctions, some like seal bid auctions in real world. In a lot of cases, we put our like bids, we, we put our like votes inside a letter, inside somewhere like leak. Nobody can see that. Nobody can like manipulate that. Nobody can like get, play a lot of games, like strategies with that. And this is part of the application. This is part of the better UX, better like execution. And we don't call it like privacy. This is not something, it is like basically some part of what we have, right? So this is our vision in Fairblock. We think 
encrypting transactions, protecting the contents of the transactions. Basically, on one side, protects users from malicious behaviors, like extract bots are like who are like extracting values in, with a, like a shady and like toxic way. For example, like with like bad MEV and France running. And in other way, it can enable developers to build some cool applications. For example, they can build games with on-chain execution, which we don't have. We have some stuff, like really early stuff with ZK, but they are not like really the suitable mechanism like for building a game because they are like they it takes a lot of time, like tens of seconds to just send a single thing and it's like really expensive. So using a simple encryption, we can keep the your hands private during execution and decrypt it like once it's safe. For same for like governance, private governance, we can encrypt your votes. For same for like I don't know, shared sequencing, we can like encrypt your L2 transactions so people cannot censor it by seeing the contents of that, even for randomness generation. So there's a lot of like different applications that we are really excited that we are enabling that with just encryption, which is like fast. It doesn't mean that we we will have a lot of like bad UX and complexities. It actually it's a very rare case that having privacy and encryption sometimes means saving money because if you have encryption, other people cannot like extract value from your strategies or like trading or in some cases it, it means that you basically have like more and better applications just like another example like something really far from like our mindset mostly like is like nfts by like if you have like right now we have a like partnership it's like a stargaze normally like in nft auctions it's a first price auction right so like theoretically if you have a first price auction it's really good for them auctioneer but like the value for people who are engaging who are bidding is not like the best but if you have a second price seal bid auction using like encryption with fair block the incentive all of the bidders have incentive to uh, bid with the true value that they think they, it, the nft has basically it means that they will get like better offers and like other people cannot hype it, uh, like nfts and like, don't make it unreasonably expensive and even more interestingly uh, right now, with like NFT auctions that we have, we should extend the duration of the MEV auction by 15 minutes every time. But having encryption just eliminates that. Like we don't need to extend it every time from the last bit by 15 minutes. So this is very interesting. Having encryption and privacy saves you money and even helps with like UX. I see. So if I was to, let's say, vote in a DAO, yeah. for a blog would basically encrypt my vote and... Uh... Is that like how it would? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like what we have right now for Cosmos chains and like uh, DAOs and other L2s, it means that you can encrypt your transaction toward the uh, deadline of the proposal or like the voting period. And all of the votes will be encrypted. So no, no one can like manipulate them or like even more interestingly, right, they cannot wait for the last second so to see like other people votes and like change it or like borrow money to change the whole election basically right after the deadline we can decrypt the like results and only after that people can see like who, who was like winner and i think this is very important because you know, at least in cosmos or like in a big DAOs, like i don't know like or like governances the, the amount of like dra the drama per second is really high and sometimes the result can change like with just few votes and just like few tweets and like dramas. And even like in real world, we can see that most of the po political elections, the results are just with like one person difference, even less. So protecting them in the same way and like, protecting people in the same way is like really important. Another like example of that is that if you are voting for someone, like some sometimes people like airdrop you. So it's basically like incentivizing people just with money. It's basically like selling your passports to the like one political party. So with encryption, like we can at least protect some part of some kind of like collusions and like strategies like this. Amazing. And where did this idea of programmable privacy come from actually? What was your original idea? So my mindset is that Right now, as I said, like we have like zero privacy on chain for applications that matters. 
we have some kind of toolings, but it's like extremely hard to like install them or like go through the learning curve. So it's basically no one uses them. Or if you use something like Tornado Cash, like, you know, good luck with that. You're, you're going to jail probably. <laughs> so on the other side, we have, so like we have like some kind of zero privacy for most of the users and we have like complete privacy that mixes the good players and bad players. And it's like really risky. And basically it means that Sometimes you don't even have the best like execution if you don't like leak some part of your transaction, right? So we should be really careful with that. But I think like ideal world is having some kind of a spectrum for privacy. So like the concept for programmable privacy is that we will keep the sensitive information inside your transactions private, so other people like I don't know bots or like your competitors cannot misuse them. But we make some part of the pr- things like public so we can help with execution of those transactions so just as an example for like encrypted limit orders ideas that we have with like cost swap and osmosis what we do is that we encrypt the amount of the transactions but we share the prices like price for execution outside of the encrypted bundle so once the prices are met we can like decrypt and execute them and this solves a lot of protects like users traders from a lot of like the strategies that front runs them just by just knowing the amount of their like limit orders and like their strategies i think this is also really interesting because like neem also have some project like a coconut right so you guys have the concept of programmable privacy in a sense not exactly what i mentioned but like for real world use use it use cases you have the idea that you can have your ID, you have like your passport in your like, application, but when you are going to a like restaurant or a bar, we don't need to leak all of the information to the like security guy, right? You can, you can just like basically leak just your name, just your like data of birth to, to like prove that you are over 21, right? But in, in this like even real world example, you are helping with execution of the application, which is going to bar and having it ring. You're not like hiding that part, but it doesn't mean that you are leaking all of your like passport or like all of your private information to the security guy and like government. And... Yes, exactly. And I was actually going to ask you about this, about a potential use cases for Fair Blocks technology outside of DeFi. So um, particularly, let's say in gaming, social apps and other areas, could you um, think of a few? What, what are the best applications for you outside of DeFi? Yeah, outside of DeFi, as I said, like private governance and like in gaming, gaming is not a big market right now in crypto, but like, I don't know, gaming community is crazy. I expect that it's going to be like really big. And the problem that we have, as I said, is that the games that we have in crypto are not actually like decentralized on chain. Most of them is just basically having NFTs or like, like assets or skins with NFTs or like payments. But if you want to, have a like online gaming, like a casino, which is like transparent. Other people, the centralized parties cannot play with the parameters. You need to have them unchained. But the problem is that, for example, in poker, when you are putting your transaction, every move of you, you're like putting your hand unchain, your competitor can see that, right? So it means that you should encrypt it. You should keep it private. Other people should do it too. And once all of them are included, in the block and finalize, we can decrypt them and execute the logic of the game. So it, it can also work for like a lot of non-gambling application like games. I should, uh, it's just like more exciting, but like for Battleship, Mafia, I don't know, whatever simple viral app gaming that we have, we can use this kind of technologies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, basically for like auction, whatever, like we, we use like blockchains, that like the real world like use cases of blockchains in like DeFi, like you know, auctions, decentralized services we need some kind of privacy yes and um so you mentioned a lot about governance processes and we we also brought them already into the conversation so how do you feel a collaboration let's say between neem and fairblock could further advance privacy in those decentralized governance processes like how how would it work from your perspective yeah, so i can see like uh, multiple ways that uh, neem and fairblock can complement each other so one way for that is that as i said like we have we are protecting contents of transactions on chain what we don't do is like we don't hide the senders like ip or address so one what like our users can do is that they can use neem 
hopefully like when they're in their wallets, once they're sending their transaction, their IPs do be protected. So just as an example, this can be important for like MEV prevention because we are protecting users from like bad MEV based on the contents of the transactions, but uh, we are not protecting users from like blind front running or like metadata front running. What it means is that like if I know your IP address, if I know you are like a like, good trader, I can see that what you are uh, sending towards your like trades and just front run them based on the timings of your trading, based on the fact that you are just trading or not. Uh, but using Neem, you can uh, protect yourself from like this. Just, it, just an as an example on how protecting like on-chain transaction plus protecting off-chain stuff can complete each other. So Neem can be a uh, like, step before using Fairblock in that sense. In the other sense, like once like our validators or like our relayers are submitting their private keys from our chain to like other ecosystems, they can also enjoy Neem. We can even include that inside our code base. So like once we are submitting them, it can like we don't need can be just part of the SDK. More interestingly, on the coconut side, for the idea that I mentioned about like selective disclosure of your information, Neem has a interesting like paper and like idea about like threshold signatures for the threshold scheme you need some kind of distributed key generation we have spent a lot of time on the development and research of distributed key generation for cosmos chains so like we like implemented the scheme and integrated that with our like with any cosmos sdk chain and neem can like also enjoy that yeah <laughs> Yeah, but okay, thank you so much. It's because NIM is a layer zero, actually. Uh, what layer does Roblox identify as? Yeah, so like it depends on the like implementation in like with NIM, uh, on the NIM side, but in the coconut uh, idea, you have a like committee of validators like, who are signing the transactions, right? So for that kind of threshold scheme, you need some kind of secret sharing. Ideally, it should be decentralized using de decentralized key generation. And like those validators can share a secret without trusting uh, any party, any third party. And like this is where like DKG can be important. So it can be on chain using like Cosmos, or it can be just like using any P2P communication. Okay, thank you. And um, how do you see Fairblock transforming the overall blockchain ecosystem in terms of privacy and user experience? Do you guys have a, a vision, a mission about the future? in terms of the blockchain ecosystem? Yeah, our, our vision is like, as I said, providing developers with this kind of toolbox with like FHE, I don't know, identity-based encryption, like any any kind of encryption that they want. Because the way that I see it is that uh, we have a like really big toolbox of cryptography schemes and toolings, but normal tools, they are not, they solve different problems and sometimes they solve the same problem, but they are not ideal. You don't hit the, hit the nail with a like wrench. <laughs> and sometimes they complete each other. So like we want to provide this kind of like flexibilities to developers who build applications. And ideally users don't see any like difference in the front end, uh, don't see any like difference in the, like, their wallet. They go through the same experience and either by default or just using a simple toggle button, they can send and keep the transaction. So I think like Flashbus team like mentioned that they predict that like 67, 60 or 70 percent of transactions will be encrypted. And I think having this kind of schemes like uh, it's a step toward the yeah, future that a lot of transactions are encrypted. Like today's like web two, like all of the transact all of the web, web web pages are like activated with HTTPS. But yeah, users doesn't know like what what's hap happening, all of the public key cryptography stuff and complex stuff. They don't need to install it. So this is our vision. We want to Encrypt transactions, a lot of transactions for all ecosystems. Uh, users will enjoy that and we will protect them. We will build more applications, but uh, with a good UX. That's really good. And um, I mean, implementing programmable privacy like you do is not an easy task. I think it's pretty difficult, right? So it's great that you're building this technology. What are some of the biggest challenges you've encountered on your journey and how did you address those? One thing that I'm like really proud of is that we have some kind of core infrastructure and in cryptography, but we are a little like more hands-on. So we actively work with teams like, I don't know, CosWap, Osmosis, or like other Cosmos chains and like L2s, like Arbitrum to design 
what we can actually do with them, like with the current situation, right? Uh, with the current like tech stack. So we like the. I think the most challenging part for us is like uh, has been designing different mecha- mechanisms that actually the system actually works, right? So like how we should receive encrypted transaction, how we should receive the decryption key, how we should decrypt them like on chain without like trusting third party. So this this like design aspect since like we are working with like multiple ecosystems was a little challenging, but I'm happy that we make it work for at least like a lot of ecosystems, like with a lot of users right now. Yes, indeed. What are the next major milestones you're expecting on your roadmap at the moment? So like we are currently on private testnet right now and the next major milestone is going on public testnet and shortly after that we have like some kind of in-house applications like the private governance thing and encrypted limit orders and intents and uh, I don't know like randomness generation like gaming uh, so we have some kind of demos and in-house applications that or like uh, other partnerships that we have so we really want to go on public testnet and then ship applications that I mentioned like one by one to just showcase the capacities of this kind of cryptography network. This is the major milestone that we have and hopefully we will go on mainnet after shortly after that. Amazing. So I read this sentence that Fairblock provides pre-execution privacy and conditional decryption in a decentralized yeah. manner. So if you had to explain this like in a really simple manner, just to conclude our talk, how would you say it? Yeah, basically we protect the contents of the transaction before execution of them because if, if, they're, if they're not protected, if they're publicly available, other bots or other people, your competitors can like misuse them. Like they, they can like leverage a lot of like strategies to uh, exploit them, right? So we protect them. We keep them private. Okay. And primary users of Fairblog will be developers then, right? The primary users will be like end users, people who are interacting with like decentralized applications, but for uh, they don't need to like install anything. So our target audience is like protocols, developers, so they can integrate with us, use our toolings. And once a developer like integrates that or like protocol integrates with us, thousands of users on top of them will be will enjoy them without going through a like really hard life. Okay, super cool. Well, thank you so much, Payman. That was very uh, detailed. I did not understand everything. I have to admit because I'm not a very technical person. But we'll, we'll upload this space on YouTube later on, and I'll share the recording with you as well, and um, probably make some recap out of it if anyone has questions please post them in the comments of this tweet so we can maybe payment can have a look at it afterwards and yeah i can't wait for nim and for a blog to potentially collaborate very excited about that and thank you so much for your time today payment thank you so much for having me like really excited to work on the privacy side with you guys and uh yeah sorry for making it like too technical um yeah. it's our challenge like come like i don't know like <laughs> educating people about like privacy and cryptography without going too much technical <laughs> but yeah <laughs> always yes okay thank you everyone and have a good rest of the day thank you so much for having me uh what do you say bye